Hi everyone, thanks for joining this session today on Drone Field to Finish, Part 1 of 5. So this is going to be a five-part series taking us through collecting that survey data, collecting those drone photos, creating a mesh file point cloud from that, using InfoWorks to create that service and ultimately bringing that into Civil 3D. So, and a little bit about me and my background. So my name is Nate Philbrick. I'm an infrastructure application specialist here at TopCon Solution Store. I'm an Autodesk certified professional in Civil 3D, FAA drone certified pilot. Previously, I was an infrastructure specialist at Autodesk, primarily focusing in recap products. So I've seen recap point clouds and recap pro and recap photo projects, those meshes created. So I've seen a lot of I've seen I've seen a lot of aerial data process through recap. Some of my personal interests include skiing, mountain biking, and a whitewater kayaking in the Pacific Northwest. One thing we're gonna look at today is the project we're working on. It's just the area near my home and just outside of Portland, Oregon. So it's a, it's a cool spot that I've been to personally. So so today's agenda. So this is the five part series we're gonna look at. So we're gonna look at part one today, collecting that data for recap photo. So we're gonna take us through best practices to collect that data and then ultimately processing it in recap photo to create that mesh and point cloud file. A little bit about the hardware I use to collect this data. And one thing to note is that this hardware is not, you don't need a $15,000 drone to call it, go collect accurate surface data. So the GCP or the control points that were uh, that were calculated were used with a TopCon device. It's a TopCon Hyper HR. So this is a multi-purpose GNSS receiver. And what I use this for is to correct, collect those five survey points that we are going to use in the model you'll see in a minute. The second piece of hardware used was a DJI mini drone. So this drone, I believe, retails for around $400. It might even be less than that now that's been out for a little while. So it's, an, it's one of the more basic, smaller drones, but you're going to notice a lot of the data is very accurate, and it does a great job processing those photos. So it's a small drone, 249 grams, and uh, outputs JPEG photos. So just a little bit of background, understanding the job site, and trying to give you a visual of what the area we're trying to survey. So you see on the photo on the left here, this is the intersection of Southeast Monroe Street and Southeast 37th Ave. And in that corner there is that field area, and that's the field area we're going to survey and create a surface from it. You'll see in that photo on the right that this is taken from Google Earth or Google Maps, and you'll see that the Southeast, that's the Southeast 37th, there's a little parking area there, and you can see it gently slopes down towards that fence and towards that large tree in the uh, far corner of the site. So the process to collect the data. So step one is to place targets on the site. So with this, this can be a little bit, you're going to want to take, you want to think about the site, think about where those GCPs are going to be located, where's, where's going to be the best location for those GCPs. So you're going to want to make sure that you're getting those high and low points. You're going to want to make sure you're getting good sampling on the exterior of your site. So you'll see in the bottom right of that picture there, there's a sheet of paper with an X mark on it. So that's what I use for my targets. So one thing when you use those targets, you're going to want to make sure those targets stay in the same location when you process that GCP data. Then when you fly the drone a like little later, that those, those pictures from the drone are in the same location as that target location. So, and then after you place those targets on the site, you're going to want to collect that GPS data at target location. So you see in that photo there, that's the GNSS Hyper HR receiver that is collecting the um, X, Y, and Z data for that specific point. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fly that drone taking those photos. So for my project, I use this platform called DroneLink, and I it's a 1.6 acre area. And I flew the drone at 150 feet. And uh, front overlap, 80%. You just want to make sure you have a good overlap with your photos so it helps recap photos, stitch things up. And I took the photos at a two-second interval. So this is what we're going to take a look at for the live demo, but this is a two-part process. So part one, we're going to import those control points into Civil 3D just to verify the location, just make sure we're working with accurate data to start with. Those recap photo projects to create them do cost a few bucks. So you're going to want to make sure that the data you're tying it into is, is accurate to your job site. And you'll see on the photo on the right here, which we'll take a look at, I like my points, I like where they are, I like where they showed up. So it, it all looks good in terms of where how the, uh, how the data collection was done for the control. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to create that recap photo project. We're going to switch those GCPs, ground control points with the photos, and then create that mesh and RCSF file. So bouncing into Civil 3D here, you can just see we have a blank drawing file open. And I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the coordinate system for that file. 
uh, for, for this project. So one thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure that you're using the same coordinate system throughout. So if you're using that coordinate system in Recap Photo, you're going to have to be using the same in InfoWorks and then the same in Simple 3D afterwards. So now we have the coordinate system set. Let's go ahead and import that point file. So and PNZ, and then we're going to just make sure we have the right format selected for it. And then we're going to say OK. And then let me just turn on that aerial data. Okay, you can see here, this is the site, this is that corner, this is uh, the 27th, and this is Monroe up here. And you'll see that these five points come in in the right location. So from when I was out on the site, remember that we have point here, point over here, and it's in the right location. I took some pictures just to make sure that this is, you know, this is that light pole right here. So everything looks good in terms of how those points were collected and where the actual location is when we stitch everything together. So now let's go into recap photo and we're going to take those photos, these control points, and then we're going to go ahead and create that model with it. So recap photo interface. So this is a aerial project. So here will be those top down photos, creating those services, those tip files. And what we're going to do is we're going to select those photos to create the project with. So these are the DGI photos and we'll say open. And there's 160 photos total. And then now that we have the photos in here, we're going to go ahead and tie in those ground control points. Keep in mind, you don't need the ground control points, but if you're going to create a surface with it and you want to geolocate it, then you're going to, you're going to need them for accurate data. All right, so these are the five control points. So I'm just going to copy them out of that text file and paste them in here. And one thing you'll notice that Recap does is it'll say, hey, we can see that it's in these eight photos. Now let's locate it even, even more precisely. So ground control point one. So I remember which one I got first. That one's actually up here at the top of this photo. So we're going to go ahead and grab a different photo, one that has it a little bit more in the center. OK, there we go. And we're going to see here, we're just going to zoom in the center of that photo there. We're like, done. And then we see we need to place it on three more images. So we're going to go here. And oh, it's not in that photo. And it's in the corner of that one. OK. Here's a good one right here. OK, so we're going to select this photo right here. And let's see what else we got. Oh, I must have selected five here. Ah, there we go. I selected five. All right. So there we go. So ground control point one. These are this is the one right here on the edge of the right on that grass and that third right on the edge of it there. So we're gonna select this. We're gonna add him in. So you can see that it recognizes that the sheet of paper here. Okay, and then we're just gonna add it to a couple more. Let me say done. And let's add it to one more. And you can add it to all of them. It doesn't, it won't make it really make a significant difference depending on, okay, if you have good data for three points and good data for eight points, it's going to be the same for both. All right, so now that we have it in there, we're going to say done. You'll see that green check mark is now there. So it says GPS, GCP is valid. It says, hey, we see it on four different photos. Uh, one thing here is you can, you can create check points. Um, what the checkpoints do is it's if you're really confident in a certain point or you want the software to really focus on certain points out of the five points and you can select a checkpoint for those certain points. So coordinate system defined, you want to make sure that this is the same OR83 NF. So let's just, and then you're going to want to go through and do all five of these, but for time sake purposes, we won't. We're just going to say done here. And then we're going to go ahead and create this project. So this is the, I just give the project a name. Going to go ahead and ask for that RCS file and that TIFF file, and then what you're going to want to do is make sure that, that coordinate system is the same one that you have defined in your for all your consistent throughout. So we're going to use that OR83 and F, and then start that project. And then the next part video series, we're going to take a look at cleaning up that point cloud and recap pro to ultimately bring it into InfoWorks. Thank you.